Hey, good morning, afternoon, evening. I'm not sure what the case may be, but wherever you are, grace and peace to you. Uh, my name is Philip de Corsi. I was born in Belfast in Northern Ireland, but presently I live in the United States. And I a pastor a wonderful church, Kindred Community Church in Anaheim, Southern California. And I want to thank Ed Cannon and I want to thank John Carley and the team at FEBC for inviting me to join you online. I want to thank you for all that you do to spread the gospel across the world. I'm so thankful for this ministry, thankful that you're making the gospel more accessible to four out of ten people across God's world. Keep up the good work. These are interesting times. These are unsettling times as our world comes out of the COVID crisis. And for uh, several weeks now and uh, several months, the world has hit the pause button and life has kind of stopped. And governments are not sure what the next move is. But what I want to remind you is that the church mustn't hit the pause button. You and I need to be aggressively involved in evangelism and the spread of God's word. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. Church history teaches that. The book of Acts teaches that. That whatever is going on in the world, the church can triumph. Jesus is always leading the church in triumph. So my word to you is keep up the good work. And I want to encourage you to that end. I want to take you to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 to 13. Paul is writing his last letter to Timothy. And he's encouraging him to endure, to persevere. In verse 10, he tells Timothy, Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect. He'll say in verse 12, If we endure, we shall reign with him. Back in verse 3, he talked about enduring as a good soldier. It's very clear that the theme of 2 Timothy 2, 8 to 13, is the theme of plodding, persevering, and progressing. Please don't go backwards during this crisis. Let the Lord Jesus lead us in triumph. You know what? William Carey was a great missionary to India. You know his story. Uh, He was famous for the words, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. And when he was asked to explain his many years in India and Calcutta, he said this, I can plod. That is my genius. I can persevere in a definite pursuit. To this I owe everything. And you know what? I trust that you will persevere. And if you come to this letter to Timothy, you're going to see that Timothy needed to hear that. Because in chapter 1, we're told he was quite fearful. He was timid in temperament. He was told, you know what? God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power through the Holy Spirit. In chapter 4, Timothy's going to learn that his best friend, his father in the faith, Paul is going to die. And, And he's not going to see him anymore. The time of Paul's departure is soon. That was a loss for Timothy. And Timothy realized, along with Paul, that there were many churches in Asia who were compromising and growing weak. And then in chapter 3, he's reminded that as the days unfold, the last days will be marked by culture that that, um, loves pleasure rather than God, a culture that's violent and opposed to the gospel. So Timothy needs to hear, this is a time to step up, not sit down. And you and I need to hear this. As the world is in crisis, you might be gripped by fear. The church might seem weak. You need to endure. You need to plod. And perhaps if you and I will do this, we'll see success. So as you look at this passage, there's four motivations. We don't have time to develop them. I'll tell you what they are. There's the empowering reality of the resurrection in verse 8. There's the unstoppable power of the gospel, verse 9. There's the glorious work of evangelism, verse 10. And there's the promise of eternal reward in verses 11 through 13. But since you're involved in proclaiming the gospel, I just want to focus on verse 9. Listen to what Paul says. In fact, I'll read verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, But the word of God is not chained. The unstoppable nature of the gospel. This is Paul's second letter. It's AD 67. He's imprisoned and he gets the sense that unlike his first imprisonment, he's not going to come out of this one. The time of my departure is at hand. I've run the race. I've kept the faith and I'm going to be with Jesus and I'll get a crown of righteousness. Paul knows his days are numbered. 
and he tells us that he's imprisoned and he, his, his liberty has been taken away. He's limited in his movement. In fact, he's in chains. But here's what he says. I might be a prisoner, but God's word is not a prisoner. I might be chained, but the word of God is not chained. And I love that thought. That's what FEBC is all about. Get the word of God out. It can't be chained. It can't be limited. That's true of Paul's second imprisonment. And it was true of Paul's first imprisonment. He writes to the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 12 to 18. And he says, my imprisonment, these things have fallen out for the furtherance of the gospel. In fact, people in Caesar's palace are being saved. You can't stop the unstoppable nature of the gospel. The church is going to grow. The, the, the seed of God's word is irreplaceable, irrepressible, irresistible. And I want to remind you of that. You need to get the word of God out. It can't be chained. It can't be stopped. I wrote this to myself. It can't be stopped by time or space. The word of God, as soon as it's preached, can last years and months in people's lives, bringing them to faith. It can't be stopped by hard hearts. It can't be stopped by government censorship or circumstances. It can't be stopped by Satan. It can't be stopped even by our weakness or an aptness. I think you and I know that at times we're not all that we want to be. We're weak and we're failing and we wonder how God can use us. But the power is in the word. We're not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. Right? Romans 1, 16 and 17. What about Isaiah 55? That the word of God as it's sent forth will not return to God void. So look, during this time, as the world hits the pause button, you need to keep serving Jesus Christ. Uh, you need to um, not be intimidated. You need to realize that nothing can thwart God's plan. The church will grow people. The elect will be saved. The word of God cannot be bound. Think about this. The word that created the world can't be held ransom to anything in the world. So make sure you broadcast the gospel. Make sure you get the word of God out and pray over it. That as it goes into hearts and homes, that God will use that seed to bring a great harvest of souls. I've got two quotes to finish with. I've seen about Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation. Here's what he said about the Protestant Reformation. I did nothing. The Word of God did it all. I simply taught and preached and wrote God's Word. Otherwise, I did nothing. And as I slept and drank Wittenberg beer with Philip, the Word of God weakened all who opposed me. The Word of God did it all. Spurgeon said this, The Word of God is like a lion. You don't defend the lion. All you have to do is let the lion loose and the lion will defend itself. Thank you for what you're doing. I'm so thankful for FEBC. Get the word of God out. The word of God cannot be chained. These may be days when, when there are limits upon us, but there's no limits to what God wants to do through his word. God bless you in all that you do. We pray for you and we think about you. And it's been a joy to share God's word with you this evening.